some technical difficulties here. And it's snowing outside. So, from wherever we left off, I'll give you the short version. A man is standing at the toilet paper aisle, deciding which one to get. The clerk comes over and explains to him, this is no-name toilet paper. It's generic. The guy says, I'll take some of the no-name paper, and he leaves. But the next week, he comes back in, obviously disgruntled, and he finds the clerk. The clerk says, can I help you? And the man says, yes, you can help me. Do you remember me? You sold me that no-name toilet paper. Yes, I remember you, said the clerk. The man says, well, I'd like, to, I'd like to give it a name. I think you ought to name that toilet paper John Wayne. The guy says, John Wayne, why John Wayne? Why John Wayne? And the man said, well, because it's rough and it's tough and it don't take crap off of nobody. <laughs> it was a lot of effort to get that joke out with the, with the technology. And I wouldn't normally have such a joke on a serious night but there's enough serious things in the world. I thought a moment of levity would be helpful. How are you making preparations for coronavirus? You've probably been to the store. We at our house, uh, we've been stocking up on more groceries than normal. We've been buying more supplies than usual because we want to be prepared to make sure that we have all of the things that we need. Jesus wanted his disciples to be prepared for all of the things that were about to happen to him. It's, it's not, it's not doing. It says this video has ended. He didn't send them to the grocery store. Are we, are we going or not? We're going, we're going. We're going. He didn't send them to the grocery store, but Jesus did give them something to help them to be prepared. He gave them the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. This sacrament would keep them nourished and sustained for the hard journey ahead. And not only for the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus, but for Jesus' followers, there would always be rejection or persecution to contend with. And so the Lord's Supper is a gift. It's a holy and special meal meant to draw believers into communion with God through His Holy Spirit. And that's why we call it communion. Because it is an opportunity for us to commune with God through the special gift that Jesus has given us. On that Thursday night, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. Jesus was showing them in a way that they could see and even smell and taste. How his body would soon be broken. How his flesh would be torn just like bread is poured. And Jesus poured the wine in order to demonstrate how his blood would soon be poured out for the forgiveness of sins. You see, salvation wasn't cheap. Our forgiveness was expensive. It was paid for with the precious blood of Christ. Jesus endured these things because it was the only way to set humankind right with God. This was all a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy found in Isaiah 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. You see, Jesus strengthened and empowered his disciples by keeping them and us always mindful of the magnanimous love of God. That we would, we would break the bread over and over again and pour the cup over and over again and always be astounded each time of the amazing love of God. That we would always be shocked and bowled over at the length which God was willing to go in order to save his people. When we celebrate the sacrament, we trust that God is working in it to strengthen us for our journey of faith, just as he has done 
for billions of Christians all around the world from the time that Jesus instituted the sacrament of the Lord's Supper until that time in which he returns. This sacred meal unites us as a people of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, and it strengthens us and empowers us to live as God's grateful children. And it's what we need, just like those disciples 2,000 years ago, we need it just as much as they did for the times ahead. Jesus gave us all the tools that we would need. He prepared us in every way so that we can walk as modern disciples of Jesus. He gave us prayer, the ability to communicate with our Creator, our Heavenly Father. Jesus gave us His Word, the Bible, which instructs us, God's authoritative Word instructs us how to live as God's faithful people. How to order right relationships between ourselves and God and between one another. Jesus gave us the church. The book of Acts chapter 2 explains how Christ called the church into order. It's an institution created by God so that disciples of Jesus Christ can be surrounded by one another and encouraged by one another and supported by one another. There are no lone ranger Christians out there operating on their own. Believers are called into community with one another so that we can grow in faith, so that we can encourage one another, so that we can join our resources for mission and for ministry, and so that we can worship God as one voice. And Christ gave us the sacraments, the sacrament of baptism, and this sacrament, of the Lord's Supper. You know, I think God is getting our attention through this coronavirus. As Jesus, after Jesus celebrated the sacrament of the Lord's Supper with his disciples on that Thursday night, he left that house and Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. We find that account later on in Matthew chapter 26. And I hope you'll finish reading that. Read that tonight or tomorrow. And you'll read how Christ with his disciples went out to the garden of Gethsemane. And he went there specifically to pray. And he left his disciples in one place. And Jesus went on to another place. And every time he came back to them, he kept binding them asleep. And Jesus woke them up three different times. I think that's what Jesus is saying today to us in, in, in this coronavirus as we're cloistered inside of our homes. I think Christ, I think God is saying, wake up, wake up. It's time to reevaluate what's really important in life. What is really sustaining you right now? Wake up. It's a wake up call for all people and for all of God's people around the world. You know, with God, all things are possible. But without God, life has no purpose or meaning. We have to wake up. We have to take our faith seriously by making Jesus the very center of our lives. He doesn't want us to be an interested person or, or a quasi-follower, a lukewarm follower. God's place in our lives is in the very center I think this is a wake-up call for America and for the world to put God in the very center of our lives, to place Him first above all other things. He's given us all the tools that we need for our journey of faith. He's made all of the necessary preparations. On this night, we act, and we come together as God's grateful people, as we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, or as we recommit our lives to following Jesus Christ. Friends, may this Lord's Supper open your eyes more and more to the immeasurable love of God for you and for His children. And may that same love move us to act in Jesus' name.
God bless you, and amen. Our second hymn together is Pass It Along. Supper isn't for everyone. It's for brothers and sisters in Christ. It's for the professing followers of Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to join with me as together we confess our faith and as we affirm our faith by boldly saying what we believe as brothers and sisters in Christ. Our, after, our affirmation of faith tonight is printed in your bulletin and it's adapted from the book of Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 through 11. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess to the glory 
Friends, let's pray. God, we thank you. For we respond in faith, in the faith of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you consecrate the gifts that we bring, even our very lives, that we may serve you wherever we may be, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, living as your grateful people, and working together as your church to bear the light of Christ. Amen. My friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. The book of, the book of Luke tells us that God's people will come just as you have come, even virtually, from north and from south, from east and from west, to come and sit at table in the kingdom of God. After our Lord Jesus died, and rose from the dead, he appeared to his disciples, only they didn't recognize him. But after Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, their eyes were open and they recognized that Jesus was right there with them. That's our prayer too, that our eyes will be open to the ways that Christ is here with us tonight. That he's here in my heart and in your heart. That he's here in this church building and that Christ is also there in your home. Strengthening you, encouraging you, supporting you in faith and nourishing you with this Lord's Supper. I invite you friends to please pray with me. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you and we praise you for out of love you spoke a word and brought creation into existence. Oh God, you filled the earth with beautiful places and amazing creatures and you filled it with men and women whom you have called to know you and, and to serve you and to love you and to know your love. Father, when we could not save ourselves, when our deeds were not worthy of your perfect and righteous standard, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the penalty for our sins. We thank you, O God, for the precious Lamb of God, we are sorry for all that we have done, and we are grateful that you have forgiven us despite ourselves, that you have washed us clean with the precious blood of our Savior, whom we receive in faith this night. We thank you, O God, for the joy of an empty grave, for Christ in rising from the grave has removed the sting of death and has opened the gates to everlasting life for those who follow him in lives of faithful discipleship. We thank you, O God, for the gift of your Holy Spirit, for you have not left or abandoned your people. You are here in the power of your Spirit, moving and working and causing the history of humankind to unfold precisely as it should. We ask your blessing, O God. We ask the blessing of your Holy Spirit to be upon these common elements of bread and wine and those elements which we are going to take at home. O God, let the distance between us disappear and unite us in the presence of your one Spirit. Take these common elements and set them apart from a common use to a special and holy use. O oh God, as the bread is broken, may it be for us a reminder of the body of Christ, broken for us because of your great love. And as the cup is shared, let it be for us a reminder of the blood of Christ, shed for us for the forgiveness of sin. 
And God, as we remember these things, let your Holy Spirit shape us and fill us with your grace and with gratitude, with thankfulness, that we may respond by living our lives for you, Lord Jesus. You died for us. Enable us by your Spirit now to live for you. God, we lift to you those needs which are heavy upon our hearts. We pray for our nation and those around the world tonight, O oh God, whose lives have been touched by this coronavirus, by this COVID-19, Lord. For those that are ill, we pray for their healing and their restoration. God, for those who are quarantined and separated from their families, Lord, we lift them before you. Those that are daring to continue working, those who are working in front lines, in hospitals and in nursing homes and in care facilities around the world, Lord, we pray that you bless them and keep them, that you protect them, that you give them strength to continue. <clears throat> God, for those uh, that are working jobs to keep groceries on our table, to keep the mail moving, to keep places cleaned and disinfected, Lord, for those that are continuing in their jobs, Lord, we just ask that they not only uh, have our gratitude, but that they know our love and their thankfulness. Lord, give us patience as we interact with them and as we endure these times together. Lord, we pray for those that are endeavoring to find vaccines and treatments and medications. We pray that they have your wisdom and your insight. And God, for those that are filled with fear, for those who are, have lost or are losing their jobs, for those who are laid off, Lord, we just pray that you speak peace to their hearts. We pray for the end of this pandemic. And we pray, Lord, for a new, a new time, a, a great awakening where we do return to our lives, but not to our normal lives. We return to lives that are filled with your spirit, that we endeavor to follow you wherever we go. And that we care for one another and treat each other the ways that we want to be treated. Lord, we, we pray these things. And we pray the many more prayers which are written upon our hearts. And you know them, O oh God. We lift them before you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I'm about to administer the elements. We have a few people here. We have a, a skeleton crew of folks that are uh, making this, this broadcast happen and are playing, playing the music. And so I'm going to administer the elements for you and you'll, you'll probably hear them come forward uh, once you've done so that they can uh, dip the, the bread in the grape juice here. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, he took the cup. Saying, this cup. This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We proclaim the saving death of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again.
My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us come to his table. Try to do this as together as possible. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the body of Christ broken for you. My friends, this is the precious blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. O oh God, you created our bodies to need food each day in order to live, in order to thrive, in order to grow and to be sustained for life. Lord, you created these spiritual bodies that we have. You created them to know you, to respond by your, to your voice and by your touch. And you created them to need this spiritual and heavenly food. Lord, once more you have strengthened us and sustained us by this sacrament of the Lord's Supper. We pray, O oh God, that we take this newfound strength, this newfound love and energy, and that we give it back to you by serving one another and by serving our neighbors in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this special time for gathering us together uh, in many different places and all over the country tonight. And we pray, O oh God, that you might move us to be your grateful people. We pray these things in the name of our risen Savior Christ, Jesus. Amen.